Welcome from the editorial board of Build Up to a new edition of our expert talk. It is a pleasure to have today Dragomir Tanev, Executive Director of Center for Energy Efficiency and Effect, and official representative of Municipal Energy Efficiency Network Eco Energy Bulgaria. Welcome, Dragomir. Hello, good morning from sunny Sofia. Looking forward to the interview. So I would like to immediately start with the first question so you can also present yourself and your background. Um, so can you present your background and experience in European projects and in particular in the Build Up Skills Initiative? Yes, uh, we are happy to be a partner in the Build Up, in the Build Up Skills Initiative since its beginning. And uh, that uh, stands back for more than 10 years now, back in 2011, we started our first build up skills experience and we continued afterwards with several consecutive uh, projects supported uh, by build up skills and the construction skills uh, se series of projects under the Horizon 2020 program. We had uh, build up skills center pro and uh, then we moved into train to NZEP and fit to NZEP uh, projects, which are, uh, I think, uh, one of the uh, the best uh, initiatives in order to stimulate the demand for construction skills in countries in Central and Eastern Europe. And this uh, gave us the confidence to continue in this direction. Currently, we are involved in several other projects. I would probably have to mention here that we are coordinating the ANZEP Roadshow project, which, uh, which just started this year. And so we expect uh, very interesting further developments uh, under this line. And uh, what have been the main achievements from these projects and initiatives and what effects would they have in the next 10 years? So in the beginning, it was all about setting a solid base for development. So we started with the first Build Up Skills uh, Bulgaria project by developing, as in the other countries, a roadmap for improving the skills in the construction sector related to NZEP design and construction and integration of uh, installations installations for um, renewable for renewable sources but that was only the pathway that we continued to follow and uh, again i cannot be more grateful for the opportunities that we had in order to step on and continue our efforts on each of the areas that we have identified in this uh, qualification roadmap so we started with developing new training pro programs. We developed dozens of them. We trained hundreds of uh, trainers and teachers in professional high schools and vocational training center who were then able to conduct, to conduct trainings under these programs. Uh, we piloted the programs and uh, I'm really happy to say that uh, more than 2000 people have been uh, trained under these programs and then this gave us the base to, to move further on and to intervene into the national uh, educational system. So we changed the state educational uh, standards on different professions. We introduced new disciplines in the training plans, both for professional high schools in construction and in the University of Architecture, Civil Engineering and Geodesy in Sofia. And actually, I believe that gives us a really good setup in order to pretend that the supply of training for NZEP in Bulgaria is at an acceptable level comparable to other European countries. Um, do you think there is sufficient market demand for educational and training programs? Yes, well, supply have been developed thanks to the European programs and uh, Horizon 2020 in particular. I must say that uh, the demand for training on ends up design and construction, it's still not overwhelming. And this is uh, to a big extent uh, due to the fact that uh, the market demand, demand for quality buildings as such is not at the level that we want to see it. And uh, actually the fact is that while we were aware of the requirements of the energy performance of buildings directives and the European policies for many, many years, the construction sector is quite slow in transforming the legal requirements into the practice. And I must say that uh, in a market uh, which is driven by lowest cost demand, it's quite hard to provoke uh, 
progressive uptake of these policies and to uh, promote a certain change into the whole attitude towards the quality in the building sector. But anyway, with the recent developments, despite the COVID crisis, uh, it's obvious that the European policies show determination in this area with uh, the renovation wave initiative in the overall framework of the Green Deal with the uh, recovery and resilience plans that are now being promoted, promoted. I trust that we have all the tools and the financial instruments necessary in order to stimulate market demand for quality buildings. Hence, the demand for skills in the construction sector will also raise. What are the next steps in order to stimulate the demand in the market? As I mentioned uh, before, our approach is uh, that uh, there will be market demand for construction skills at the moment when we see market demand for quality sustainable buildings. And uh, this approach is epitomized by our latest projects that is supported by Horizon 2020, the ENZ approach all. In this project, we plan to organize in the next two years, at least 15, I hope about 25 large scale events in five European, European countries in different cities all around the countries. And uh, we trust that we have to complement our usual approach of policy conferencing and uh, professional trainings with much broader set of events which are involving the end users. And by that we mean we will do construction fairs, we will do live demonstrations of different products also assisted by VR and AR technologies, we will do job fairs, we will do many games for the children, for the elderly. We will go on wheels and we will produce a demonstration mobile houses where we will show the benefits and the comfort that NZEPS brings. And this is how we hope to stimulate the market. And uh, we are so happy to have the chance to support these kinds of activities with other projects that we have. Uh, for example, under the project Instruct, we have the chance to work uh, very actively with the municipalities and to help them to introduce uh, skills criteria in the procurement procedures. We also have the chance to develop together with the branch organization a uh, register for skilled workers. Then under bus leaks, we will support communication campaign in uh, promoting the energy efficiency policies in the, the building sector at national level. And uh, last but not least, I'm happy also to mention the input that we received from the Craft Edu project, where we already have a good solid set of eight training programs on different professions, which are of excellent quality and uh, enable mutual recognition of skills, knowledge and competences at European level. What other instruments do you consider offering better potential of improvement? And also taking into account uh, the pandemic in which we are, we are in, uh, what uh, do you think would be the impact uh, of COVID-19 in the organization execution and the outcomes of trainings? Yes, that's obviously a very important question given the situation that we are all facing now. I already mentioned that we plan to organize a lot of uh, attractive physical presence events in the next two years. But obviously we must have a, a backup plan and uh, a lot of efforts are being now invested into development of blended learning systems uh, using to the best possible extent and degree the capacities of uh, online training methods in the construction sector of course it's not always possible to go online to fully depend on online training but anyway any opportunity that we can use in that direction should be applied. That goes very much uh, in line with the overall process of digitization of uh, the construction sector, the introduction of uh, BIM enabled technologies also in the training and uh, education process. So there's a lot to develop in that area. Uh, a lot has to come also with uh, the system for recognition of uh, competences of skilled workers including uh, opportunities for on-the-job training and recognition exams that can be really limited in time and avoid the necessity to gather many people in closed premises. The last thing I would like to mention in this direction that we already are trying uh, a certain quite ambitious in my 
understanding uh, approach in utilizing online conferences. We are at the moment doing a training course for homeowners associations regarding energy efficient renovation of multifamily buildings. And I have to tell you that uh, there are more than 130 registered participants. And for a country as Bulgaria, that's that's a big number. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that there's such a confirmed applicability, applicability of such uh, tools in that area. And how would you approach professionals in their field in order to train them? Do you, did you experience some resistance from them? Um, are there differences between uh, different uh, professions and different countries? Yes, thank you for uh, this, I would say, quite complicated question because uh, really in my experience, the situation in different countries in Europe uh, might differ a lot. Uh, in Bulgaria, particularly, we still do not have uh, extensive experience with continuous professional development system in the construction sector. And there is quite a lot of resistance from different construction group groups. Uh, I would say in both areas, in both highly qualified construction specialists and in blue collar workers, there is resistance that can be tangibly felt, although it appears in different forms and shapes. And, but actually there are some good signs that uh, we have to follow, that we have to chase in order to provide some direct impact to the professional groups. And we have been in talks with uh, both uh, the professional organization of uh, architects and with the Bulgarian Construction Chamber in order to start developing and contributing to the first shapings of the continuous professional development development uh, systems in Bulgaria. They're still not obligatory, but uh, the idea is that at the moment that we are able to provide quality content, we would be able to gradually apply stricter requirements to the professionals and we teach them, train them to become more responsible for their continuous upgrading of the competences they need to deliver quality buildings in their respective areas. So the way is clear and uh, we are starting the next year with the hope that things would be better for everyone and we would have a definite improvement in the demand for the sectors, which would be matched with good quality supply of trainings for different professional groups. So thank you, Dragomir, uh, for sharing with us your experiences and for discussing about the topic um, of building skills and educational programs. Thank you also to our audience and see you next time. Thank you. It was a pleasure from my side.